Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Welcome back to Dark Matter 1801. Um, today we have some powerful information for you, so it will help for you to get a pen and paper ready. This video is going to be one of the most devastating videos to the uh, Eurocentric, the Egyptology, the Egyptologists, the whites, the Arabs, and anybody in the world who think that the ancient Egyptians are not black. Not only are they black, but the ethnic origin is Yoruba as well. We also like to state that we've used primary evidence in our research mainly. This includes papyrus, hieroglyphs, pictures, and statues, including dates as well. This episode is called We Solve It. The greatest puzzle in the world is now being completed. We begin with who built the pyramids of Giza? The popular belief is that Pharaoh Khufu, who is the second pharaoh of the fourth dynasty, who ruled between the year 2589 BC to 2556 BC, actually built the pyramids. But we're here to tell you that he did not build the pyramid of Giza. In fact, we also find that the statue that they've been displaying as Pharaoh Khufu. It's not actually Pharaoh Khufu, but that statue actually belongs to Pharaoh D or Pharaoh De Pharaoh Shepataki, who is the um, fifth Pharaoh of the first dynasty of Egypt. We find in our research that Egyptologists have been move, moving pharaohs around so that people don't know who they are. So for example, they may move one pharaoh from the first dynasty of Egypt to the fourth dynasty of Egypt. Then they may move another pharaoh from the 18th dynasty of Egypt to the fifth um, dynasty of Egypt. So they've been switching pharaohs around. Um, they've been switching pharaohs and their goods around so people don't really know their true identity. Also, we found a fragment of pharaoh De who is the uh, fifth pharaoh of the first dynasty. Um, we found the um, solar ship actually displayed on a fragment. So that proves that the solar ship that they've been displaying as Pharaoh Khufu is not actually Pharaoh Khufu's solar ship, but that of Pharaoh Sheikh Bataki. This is the pyramid of Giza here. As you can see, there's three pyramids, three big pyramids and three small pyramids. We're gonna give you the history of those pyramids. Now, this is Pharaoh De or Pharaoh Shekwataki, who is the fifth Pharaoh of the first dynasty of Egypt. He ruled between the years of 2975 BC to 2935 BC. As you can see him there, he's actually got the double crown. So he's the first in history to unify Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt. Now, let's examine his record of achievements. You can see within his record of achievement that there's three triangles, if you look very closely. To the left-hand side, there's three triangles, and to the right-hand side, there's also three triangles. You see those three triangles to the left-hand side, that is the big pyramids, the three big pyramids, the pyramids of Giza. And the one to the right-hand side, are the three small pyramids of Pharaoh Shekwataki. Now, this here is Set. Set really is a Greek word. And in this video, we're actually going to demonstrate to you that the Greeks, um, who were really the last rulers of ancient Egypt, are not ancient Egyptian. Because anywhere you see any Greek sounding word, you need to discount it because the Asian Egyptians are not Greek and the Greeks are not Asian Egyptians. We've already told you the Asian Egyptian from the first dynasty of Egypt to the 26th dynasty of Egypt are Yoruba race. So Set, the name Set really is a Greek word or Greek translation. The proper Asian Egyptian language is Ashe, A-C-E. That is what Set is. Set is actually Ashe, and Set is the pharaoh or the king of Lower Egypt. He is the brother of Osiri or Osiris, in which we're going to mention a little bit later. But we just want to clarify so that you know exactly how those three pyramids of Giza came about, the three big ones and the three small ones. So the next picture, you can actually see 
Pharaoh Shekwataki or Pharaoh they wearing the double crown. On the right hand side is Horus. So Horus and Shekwataki are the same person. Horus is actually a Greek translation. We're going to give you the proper translation of who Horus is. So Horus and Shekwataki are the same person. So let's go back to Tasseti, Nubia, where um, Pharaoh Dei or Pharaoh Sheikh Batagi's ancestors actually comes from. So Tasseti, Nubia is known as the land of the bull. So racist Egyptologists normally would display this picture here showing black people with bow and arrows. But if you look at the actual hieroglyph itself, it has nothing whatsoever to do with one arrow because that's exact, That's not what the name means. Ta means to sell. She means to do. And ti means to perform. So the actual name of Nubia is Ta She Ti. That is the ancient Egyptian language of, of, of Nubia. Then you can see pyramids here. They have almost over a thousand pyramids in Ta She Ti. This is where Sheikh Pataki and his ancestors actually come from. So they've had over 2000 years before, or 2000 years of pyramid building before the Pyramid of Giza was even built. So they have the technology, they have the know-how. So these people have been building pyramids 2000 years before the Pyramid of Giza was ever built. And yet nobody's actually gone to Tasheti, Nubia, to say that those pyramids were built by aliens or people from outer space because they know that that civilization is actually black, is undeniably black. If you look to the right hand side, you can actually see the mountain still inside the pyramid. And also, if you look to the left hand side, you can also see that pyramid as well. It's still got the mountain inside. So not all the pyramids were actually built from scratch. Some were mountains that were made into pyramid looking objects. This is Pharaoh, Day of Pharaoh Sheikh Pataki's tomb. He is the best archaeologically attested Pharaoh in history. And is the first actually to be buried with a staircase going down his tomb and granite on the floor of his tomb. So the evidence suggests that he was the one who designed and carved the uh, pyramid of Giza. We also find that Pharaoh Dei or Pharaoh Sheikh Pataki was the one who built the Sphinx. Now, if you look at this picture here, you see the picture of or the drawing of a panther. Now originally the Sphinx was a black panther and we're going to tell you the reason why it's a black panther. Now the reason why the Sphinx is actually a black panther was it was kind of like him paying a homage to his dad. We find that Pharaoh Dei or Pharaoh Shekwataki's dad is actually Osiris. Like we said Osiris is actually a Greek translation so the proper translation is Osiri or Orisha. That is who Osiris is. So we can see on the screen, Osiris is actually Greek. Um, the proper translation, as we said previously, is Osiri or Orisha in ancient Egyptian language. We find, for example, if you read this paragraph, the ancient Egyptian language would say Da Osiri Bo, which means to plot against an innocent person with a view to murdering him. On the right hand side, this is Osiris. You can see Osiris being represented as black. Now, Osiris' other name is Okunkun. Okunkun means darkness. So you have the OKU, which means death, and then you have the KU, which means die. So Osiris or Okunku is actually the Lord of the Death or the Lord of the Underworld. That is who Osiris is, who we now know as Osiri. We find that Osiri or Osiris is the fourth pharaoh of the first dynasty of Egypt. Um, he reigned 
um, in the year 2980 BC and his cartouche name is Ita, that's I-T-A, that is his cartouche name and is represented with a falcon. Now in ancient Egyptian language you might have one word, um, the same word, but it might mean three or four different meanings um, and it depends on how it actually sounds. So the pharaoh's name Ita has two meanings. So the first meaning is outside. So um, Osiri or Ita is always outside. Now the second meaning of Ita also means a yellow ant. You see them sometimes carrying a green leaf on their head. Osiri or Osiris also represents himself in the color of yellow and green. So we find that this picture that you're looking to the right hand side is actually Pharaoh Ita or Pharaoh Osiri, who is the fourth king of the first dynasty of Egypt. Remember, as we stated previously, Egyptologists have been moving pharaohs around. So they've been moving pharaohs from one dynasty to the next, so they can actually hide their identity. So who they've got as Sneferu is not actually Sneferu. So that um, picture that you see there is actually that of Pharaoh Ita or Pharaoh Isiri, who is the father of Shekwataki. This is the reason why they want to erase them from history. Now, the fourth pharaoh, Ita, is also known as Tejet. Now, Tejet is not even his name, so that's not his name. The word Tejet actually comes from the Tejet pillar, which is actually a Greek translation. The proper translation for the Tejet pillar is actually called Jebi pillar. Jebi means to be guilty. It's a guilty pillar. You can see the Jebi pillar as represented by Osiri or Osiris, who is also known as Orisha. On the right hand side, you can actually see Osiri behind his pillar called the Jebi pillar. Jebi means the guilty pillar or to be guilty pillar. Now in the next picture, you can see Ani, that's what they call, they said Ani is the scribe of the uh, Ma'at uh, papyrus, we find this is absolutely not true at all because Ani is actually the wrong word. It's actually any, which means a person. So what's happened in this picture is they've, en um, any, a person has been brought. Her name is Tutu. She's been brought before Osiri. Now you cannot see Osiri. So you're not allowed to see him. So he's either standing or is sitting down in a private room. So the citizens will go to Osiri or Osiris to confess their sins. Remember we told you previously that the word Ani is wrong. So any is a person, that's what it means. Then any is a mat. So this is where the word ma'at actually comes from because any can be translated in two ways, a person, or any a mat. So this is where they were fooled and they called it the ma'at. But really there's nothing like the ma'at. The ma'at does not exist. It's basically the 42 laws of any jebi. So any is a person and jebi is the, um, the guilty party. So any jebi is person found guilty, comes before Osiris and confesses their sins. And we have the 42 laws of any jebi which is as follows. We're just going to read maybe four or five of them. And this is where the Ten Commandments actually come from. So this is some of the 42 laws of any Jebi. I have not committed sin. I have not committed robbery or violence. I have not stolen. I have not slain anybody. I have not stolen grain. And it goes on and on and on. So citizens come before the um, Osiris to confess their sins. In private. If you look to the picture on the left hand side, this is Christianity 4,500 years later, the Christianity and the Catholic Church. On the left hand side, you can see a woman confessing to the priest. And you can see that 
the, the woman is not allowed to see the priest's face. This is where this is where they stole the concept from. 4,500 years before Christianity. On the right hand side as well, you can see a man confessing to the priest. So you can see the priest right here in, a, in kind of like a room and then the man is confessing to the priest without actually seeing the priest's face. So this is where they stole Christianity from. This is where Christianity stole their ideas from. So we find that Osiris, um, uh, Isis and Horus are actually a representation of Mary, Joseph and Jesus Christ. This is where it came from. Again, you can see in the pictures here on the left hand side, you can see Osiris, Isis and young Horus. And then on the right hand side, you can see Horus, Osiris and Isis. We also find that Menef is actually Isis, who is the wife of Osiris. Now, Isis is a Greek translation, like we told you previously. The proper translation for her name is Isin, which means to worship. So she is actually Osiris' wife. Remember, we've already identified Osiris or Osiris or Orisha as the fourth pharaoh of the first dynasty of Egypt. Now, he's known as the Lord of the Death or the Lord of the Underworld. Reason being because he was very popular during that, those times. He brought a lot of comfort to his citizens by way of, you know, them celebrating death because they've had over two and a half thousand years to see that, you know, people do reincarnate and they do come back. So he, he was one of those pharaohs who was so popular and they celebrated death a lot. This is the reason why they used to bury pharaohs with their goods so that they can come back because they believe in um, the afterlife. Now, to lower Egypt was his brother called Set, but his real name is Asher. So Asher was jealous of the success of his brother, um, um, his brother to the south. So Asher now planned to murder his brother. And Osiri did not do anything wrong to Asher, who was the ruler of the north. So he planned and he murdered his brother in an extremely gruesome way. In fact, he hacked Osiris into 12 different pieces so that they would not be able to embalm him. That is how gruesome the murder was during those times. You can see Osiris now being taken to his funeral procession in this picture here with a cow. Um, the popular belief is that um, the apis bull at Alu, that's wrong, is actually the word is Malu, which means a cow, and it was actually buried with a cow. That's why sometimes Osiris or Osiri is represented by a cow, because he was actually buried with a cow. When Osiri or Osiris was murdered, at that time, Pharaoh De or Pharaoh Shepataki was about 15 years old. So his mom, who is Isis or Isi, took over the throne as a co-regent to Pharaoh Shepataki during those times. So when she came on the throne, she then stripped Aset or Set of his crown. So now Aset was given a new um, deity known as Eshu, which is the devil, because of the murder he committed against his brother by hacking him into 12 pieces. So Aset now became Eshu. The ancient Egyptians would say Eshu ni ota Osiri or Orisha. This means the devil is the enemy of Osiri or Orisha as Osiri and Orisha are the same person. So when Pharaoh De or Pharaoh Shepataki came of age and took the throne, this is what his name is. So he took Oku Oku, cause don't forget previously we said the dad's name Os Os Osiri or Osiris is also known as Okunku. So he took the name Oku, which means dead, then he took the name G.A. Ga, which is a title and an office rise up in ranks. Then he took the name Ade, <clears throat> which is a crown. 
So don't forget, remember we said they to arrive. So all they did was add the A in to make it a crown. So his full name is Okugade. That is the first name that has ever been used in history, reserved for him personally, because his dad died, which is Oku. Then he came onto the throne, and then he rise up in rank, and then came onto the throne. As we said previously, his dad from the name Okunku, which means darkness. So when Pharaoh De or Pharaoh Shekwataki came of age, um, he took the throne at the age of about 18 years old, then took revenge on the murder of his father, Osiri or Osiris. So he went to Lower Egypt and took revenge and murdered his uncle, who is Aset or Set, to then take the double crown because Ashe or Set is represented by the red crown and uh, Shepataki is represented by the white crown. So once he defeated Set, who is now known as Eshu, the devil, he reunified um, ancient Egypt into one, Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt, hence the double hat. So this is where they gave Pharaoh De or Pharaoh Shekwataki the title Horus. As we said, Horus is actually a Greek translation. So we're going to give you the proper translation in ancient Egyptian language. Remember before we said that a word can mean four different things, depends on the way it sounds. So the first word is on. That's where horrors actually comes from. So it's on. So on means heaven. The second word is oru, which means heat. Then oru, which means sun. Then oru, which means midnight. Then they then added ol, the syllabus ol, zone, a reduplication of the initial letter of onu together with the letter i generally used to donate ownership or an agency. So it became Olon, which is Lord of the Universe. So Olon is Horus with the double crown, which is Pharaoh De or Pharaoh Shepataki. Also, Pharaoh De is the high of Ra and also the eye of Horus because Pharaoh De or Pharaoh Shepataki is Olong and is Horus. So if you look to the left hand side, you can actually see Pharaoh De or Pharaoh Shepataki, who is represented with the same hat as the one as Horus on the right hand side. So his full name is Olong, which is Lord of the Universe, Shepataki, which is larger than life, which is the infinity sign, and then Okugade, which is dead, rise up in rank to wear a crown. And then you can see Horus or Olong also holding a key. They call that key the Ank. That's not what it means. That key actually means Kokoro. So it's the holder of the keys to heaven and hell. He's the first and he's not even a deity. He's the first human being in history who is not a deity, and that remains still his date. Therefore, Pharaoh Shekwataki is the first representation of the number 33 in history, because we want to tell you the exact history of the number 33. So you see the three big pyramids, they represent Upper Egypt and heaven. The three small pyramids represent Lower Egypt and hell, because he defeated Asher, who is now known as Eshu, the devil, to reunify Egypt. Hence, the double crown, red and white. Red for blood, representing Lower Egypt, and white for white, representing Upper Egypt, which is a heaven. So now this brings us back to the Sphinx. Remember we said that the Sphinx was originally a black panther. So Shepataki is the first black panther in history 
to represent his dad, Osiri Osiris, who is also represented in black, Okuku, which means darkness. Now, who changed the head of the Sphinx? Because the Sphinx has been lying there for over 1,573 years without being touched. So who actually changed the Sphinx to the head of a pharaoh? So we're going to take you now into the 18th dynasty and we're going to go into the 8th pharaoh of king of the 18th dynasty. Now, as you can see in this image here, on the left hand side, when you go to the Cairo Museum, this is who they display as Pharaoh Thutmosis, who is the um, eighth Pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. But on further investigation, we find that this is not actually Thutmosis himself, but this is Ptolemy the first Sota. So on the left hand side, we have the mummy of Ptolemy the first Sota. And on the right hand side, we have his bust. The right hand side bust was actually made in the year 285 BC. That is the same year in which he died. Now for brief history, Ptolemy was the first Greek ruler of ancient Egypt. He ruled between the year 305 BC to 285 BC. Um, by the time he got to the throne, ancient Egypt had already fallen 200 years previously. So they are the first white European Greek to rule ancient Egypt during those periods. And we also find that if you check, most of the mummies, the Ptolemy mummies, have not been found. So the reason why the Ptolemy mummies have not been found is because they've been found already. They've actually, because they're European looking, all the mummies from the, from all the Ptolemy mummies have actually now been inserted into the um, 18th dynasty of Egypt to, because the mummies look white. So that's why they took all the Ptolemy mummies, including Cleopatra herself. Cleopatra will most probably be within the um, 18th dynasty because they're Greek, they're European looking. Now, let's go back to this picture here. On the left hand side, you can actually see this is Ptolemy. He has exactly the same ears as the bust on the right hand side. They have the same nose, exactly the same nose. What even gives this mummy away is actually the chin. If you look very closely, the chin are exactly the same. So Ptolemy has a chin. They have a chin which actually curves up like that. You know, so the Ptolemy have chins that actually curves up. Now his mouth, because it's open, may look a bit wider, but don't let that fool you. This is Ptolemy the first Sota. This is him here, this is mummy. So Egyptologists have been fooling you to make you think that this is actually um, uh, Thutmosis the fourth, but it's not actually Thutmosis, but it's actually Ptolemy the first. This is actually one of Alexander the Great general, Ptolemy the first Sota. Sota actually means savior. So this is the closest you're gonna get to Alexander the Great. We don't call him Ale Alexander the Great in this channel. And we actually call him Alexander the Greek because really most of those invaders were, were, are basically just thieves looking for other people's properties. So this is the closest you're going to get to Alexander the Great. Ptolemy the first Sota would actually be the first um, European mummified um, person in history. And you see the bust on the right. This is actually um, currently in a museum in Copenhagen. So this is where we actually got the um, picture from and we made the comparison. On the left hand side, you can actually see Ptolemy the first Sota. Sota basically means savior. You can see his coin on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we have Serapus Christus. 
um, Serapus Christus was created for Ptolemy um, when he came to power in 305 BC. So he wanted his own god. So he consulted the um, local um, ancient Egyptian. And they were not going to give him Olong because Olong is a deity and they can never give him Olong. So what they did was they gave him Osiris instead. So Serapus Christus is a representation of Osiris. So Christus, this is the first Christ in history. This image that you see on the right hand side is, is what evolved into Jesus Christ that people are worshipping today. He actually invented Serapus Christus. It was only at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD that Serapus no longer became Serapus Christus, but then became Helios Christus, then became Jesus Christ, because the Greek then hijacked his religion and then turned it into a Roman religion. This is where it came from. And also, we like to state on the left-hand side, we say that's his coins. There is no depiction of ancient Egyptian here. He doesn't show himself as an ancient Egyptian here. He's got no dressing of ancient Egyptian. You can actually see that his curved chin, which looks exactly like his mummy, in this coin here. And if, you, if we go to the next coin, again, you see Sota, exactly the same with that curved chin. So Ptolemy the first Sota ruling the year 305 BC to 285 BC. His son, Ptolemy the second, also is not shown as an ancient Egyptian. If he was an ancient, ancient Egyptian, he would have shown, uh, you know, him wearing feral clothes or showing um, something relating to ancient Egypt. But there's nothing here to prove that they're ancient Egyptian. They're not even wearing the clothing. And this is Ptolemy II, who ruled between 285 BC and 246 BC. Third, we have Ptolemy III again, who ruled between 246 BC and 221 BC. This is his coins here. There's absolutely nothing about ancient Egypt here because they were proud of their culture of being Greeks. Fourth again is a coin of Ptolemy the fourth, a gold coin. He ruled between 221 BC and 203 BC. Again, not a single mention of ancient Egypt or ancient Egyptian ware or showing pyramids, nothing like that. Then again, we we'll move to Ptolemy the fifth, who ruled between 203 BC and 181 BC. Again, nothing. Absolutely, there's absolutely not a single evidence of ancient Egyptian wear or ancient Egyptian culture because they're proud of being Greeks. He, Ptolemy V, was actually responsible for deciphering the hieroglyphs for the local community. On the right hand side, again, is Ptolemy VI, who ruled between 181 BC and 164 BC. Again, the coins is there, nothing whatsoever about Asian Egyptian or Asian Egyptian language because they're not. They didn't see themselves as such. They were actually quite proud of their culture. Then we go again to Ptolemy the Tenth. Again, throughout the coins, you can actually see that distinct um, chin, the chin actually curving, almost looking upwards. Again, Ptolemy the Tenth ruled between 107 BC to 88 BC absolutely nothing about ancient Egypt. Then we go on to Ptolemy the 13th, who was a joint ruler with Cleopatra. He ruled between 51 BC and 47 BC. Again, nothing there. If they were ancient Egyptian, they would have, they would have depicted themselves as such. They didn't show themselves as ancient, ancient Egyptian. They did not even move with ancient Egyptian. They did not mix with ancient Egyptian. They lived in Alexander. So they just mixed with themselves. They didn't mix with the locals. And then finally, this is the coin of Cleopatra. And you can see that distinct nose in that coin there with also that chin. This is Cleopatra the seventh. She was 
most probably the last queen of Egypt. And she ruled between 51 BC to 30 BC before she was then um, overthrown by, by the Roman, Roman Empire. So really, she was the last. So you can see coins after coins after coins after coins does not show them right here as ancient Egyptians. They are not ancient, ancient Egyptians. They don't show themselves as, as such. And most of the mummies of this specific dynasty, they're actually called the Lagid dynasty. So most of the Ptolemy dynasty or the Lagid dynasty, their mummies have been found. They've been inserted into the 18th dynasty. That's what Egyptologists did. So you can see by the coins from the Ptolemy, the Lagid dynasty, that they are not ancient Egyptians and they don't depict themselves as such. If they were, they would just show themselves in the coins, just like our ancestors also did. Our ancestors was proud of wearing their gown, their headgear and everything, and that would have appeared in their coin if they were the original ancient Egyptians. But as we've said in our episode, they're not. And the coins prove that point. So now that we know that the Sphinx was originally a black panther, because we now know that the Black Panther is actually Pharaoh Okugade or Pharaoh De or Pharaoh Shepataki. So he is the first Black Panther in history. And we also know that that Black Panther has been sitting there in that desert for about 1,573 years. So who changed the head of the Black Panther to of Pharaoh's head. And we've also told you that that mummy that is sitting in the uh, Cairo Museum that they're showing everybody that that is uh, uh, Top Moses the fourth. That's not Top Moses the first. We've already proved it here in this video that that is actually Ptolemy the first Sota. So I want you, I want us to clarify that issue before we move any further. So that mummy that you see displayed in the Cairo Museum is not Top Moses the fourth, but Ptolemy the first Sota. So this here is Pharaoh Otito Moshe. Now he's the eighth king of Pharaoh of the 18th dynasty and he ruled between the year 1401 BC to 1391 BC. He was the one who changed the Sphinx which was originally um, a black panther to his head. So this is how the Sphinx would have looked like. This is basically who they call Top Moses the Fourth. Now, the name Top Moses the Fourth is not his real name. Remember, we said the Greeks are not ancient Egyptians. So the word Thor is actually Greek. The proper translation is Otito, which means truth in ancient Egyptian language. And the second word, Moshe, means thank you in ancient Egyptian language. And also, Otito Moshe, he's also known as Alala, which is a dreamer. You see, Otito Moshe is the Joseph of the Bible, the dreamer stolen by Jewish, French, and German um, Egyptologists to insert into the Bible. The story goes like this. One day, um, Otito Moshe uh, went to the pyramid and he slept on the pyramid one evening. And when he slept, he had a dream because at the time, the pyramid was covered in sand, but the head was still that of a black panther. So he said he had a dream of Olong. Don't forget Olong is the fifth king of the first dynasty. So Olong is Shepataki. So he said he had a dream of him. And the dream was that he should clear up um, the sand that has covered the pyramid. And that's exactly what Otito Moshe did. So he cleared up all the sand that covered the Sphinx at the time. But what he then did was he put his face on the Sphinx. So that's how the Sphinx looks like that today. 
So that sphinx is Otito Moshe's head. And the reason why he had to convince his citizens to allow him to change the um, original Black Panther's face to his face because he was a successful dreamer. Every time he had dreams, all his dreams normally come true. So that's why his citizens actually believe him. And he's the Joseph of the Bible. Also, Pharaoh Otito Moshe is also known as Aton. Aton is a place and Eton is a storyteller. So that goes to tell us that Pharaoh Otito Moshe was a storyteller. So people, his citizens used to come to him and in a certain place called Aton, which is a place he would tell them stories. Maybe he was telling them stories about, about, um, his, uh, about his grandparents and wars and all kinds of stuff. So he was a storyteller as well. So that's where the name Aton actually comes from, A-T-O-N. So this is the head of the Sphinx as it looks now. So Pharaoh Otito Moshe, the king of the 18th dynasty, that's his head there. You can see exactly before they actually hacked it off. Egyptologists hacked it off. On the left hand side is Top Moses. There's a side view. And then on the right hand side, you can see exactly how the um, Sphinx um, currently look like. So it's actually the face of Pharaoh Otito Moshe. So once you're looking at this face, this is the real face of how the Sphinx uh, would have looked like. Also, as we find Pharaoh Otito Moshe, who is the um, eighth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, is actually the great grandfather to who is known as Akhenaten. Now, Akhenaten is not his name. His proper name is Aki Aten. Remember we told you that Aten is a place and Eton, his grandfather, was a storyteller. This is Pharaoh Aki Aton, who is known as Akhenaten. We've already stated that's not his name. He is the 10th ruler of the 18th dynasty. And he ruled between the year 1353 BC to 1336 BC. On the left-hand side, you can actually see him clearly that he's black. In fact, Yoruba, because his name suggests that, Akin Aton. And then on the right hand side, you can also see him there, you know, almost like folding his hand. And this is who the racist uh, Egyptologists and the racist white community call an alien. Because if you go into YouTube and other channel, this pharaoh is depicted as an alien. And just for the first time, Aten doesn't mean a new religion because Akhenaten did not invent the concept of one god. The concept of one god has already been well established in the first dynasty of Egypt. And that god is Olorun Shikwataki. It's there. So Akhenaten did not invent the concept of one god. Even Aten itself is not a religion, but a place. So Egyptologists got, got it completely wrong. They got fooled. So as you can see on the screen, Akhenaten is a Greek word. We've already said that previously, that the Greeks are not ancient Egyptians and we've actually proved that. So any word that sounds Greek, discount it and go for the real word because Akhenaten is actually Akhenaten. So the real name Akhenaten, Akhen means brave in ancient Egyptian language, then Aton means a place. Also, you can also see him depict in this picture as well. On the left hand side is Akin Aton and his son. On the right hand side is his wife, um, his actually second wife known as Ifatiti. Everybody is referring to her as Nefertiti. That's not her name. Her name is Ifatiti and above them is Ra. So some people call it Ray to confuse you, but it's not Ray. It's actually Ra and we know exactly who Ra is. So this proved that Akin Aton is a Ra worshipper as well. He worships Ra because that's the sun, that's, that's the sun. This. So Aten is not a religion at all, but a place. This is where Egyptologists have been fooled. We're going to tell you for the first time who actually Ra is. Here is a depiction of Ra. 
He is the first pharaoh of the fifth dynasty. We've looked at some of the busts, but that's not him because we believe those busts are fake. Now, he, like we said, he's the first pharaoh of the fifth dynasty. Um, he's known as Kepera, and that translation is actually wrong because, again, we told you that that's a Greek translation. His real name is Alagbara, which is strong. So that the words Alagbara, the last two letters, Ra, then became Ra. That's where it actually come from. So Ra or Alagbara is the first pharaoh of the fifth dynasty of Egypt. Also, Akhenaten, who, is, who we now know as Akin Aton, first wife, is Kia. So Kia, again, is a wrong translation. That's a Greek translation. Her name is actually Ia, which means mother or mother of the house. So we now know that she's not actually the second wife of Akin Aton, but the actual first wife. And the second wife, who the Greek call Nefertiti, that's wrong, that's a Greek translation actually. So, Ifa, which means touch in ancient Egyptian language, and Titi, which means until in ancient Egyptian language. So the real name is Ifa Titi, not Nefertiti. Here on the left-hand side, you can actually see her. This is her bust. So this is Akin Atta's first wife known as Iya, and on the, on the right hand side, you can actually see clearly, this is Ifatiti, known to the world as Nefertiti. This is her here. So, this bust that you see of Ifatiti is fake. It was made by um, Ludwig, basically. Ludwig was, was an Egyptologist in the uh, 19th century. Um, Ludwig Borgard was actually born on the 5th of October, 1863, and died on the 12th of August, 1938. And he's, he was born in Berlin. He's a German Egyptologist. So you can see most of the frauds that have been committed were committed by Germans, German and French Egyptologists. So he was the one who commissioned the busts and discovered it on the 6th of December, 1912. So the boss that everybody's been displaying around is actually a fake, is an image of his wife. What Egyptologists used to do back then was they have a laboratory of producing fake artifacts. So what they'll do is when they go to Egypt at night, they'll dig up holes, they'll put the fake artifacts right here into the sand and then come back the next day and dig out and show everybody, bring the media, to show that, oh, they discovered it. But it's actually fake. On the right-hand side is Vivant Dillon. Now, Vivant Dillon visited the uh, Sphinx of Giza in 1789 and actually sketched it. And this was before the invasion of Napoleon um, in 1799. So this was a year before Napoleon actually um, invaded Egypt at the time. So you can see Vivant drawing here made in 1798. So this drawing here still had the nose quite visible on the Sphinx and we're told that um, the Sphinx um, was damaged by uh, Napoleon's soldier or that it was damaged by um, an Arab in the uh, 13th century, but this is not actually the case. You can see time after time that everything points to um, French and German Egyptology destroying the features of, um, <clears throat> of the, the, the Sphinx so that nobody would know um, exactly how they actually look like. This is what Vivan Dillon actually said um, when he drawed or made a sketch of the Sphinx. He said this, though its proportions are colossal, the outline is pure and graceful. The expression of the head is mild, gracious and tranquil. 
The character is African, but the mouth and the lips of which are thick has the softness and delicacy of execution. Mm. Truly admirable. It seems real and fresh. Art must have been at a high pitch when this monument was executed. For if they had once what it calls style, this is the say. The straight and bold lines which gives expression to the figures under which the Greeks have designated their deities. Yet sufficient justice has been rendered to the fine simplicity and character of nature which is displayed in this figure. This is exactly what Vivian Dillon wrote when he sketched the Sphinx. Also, as you can see, I mean, the atrocity by Egyptologists, I mean, the jealousy and the envy and the hatred of our people because we um, created one of the greatest civilization in history is just mind blowing. If you look at these pictures to the left hand side, look at the nose damaged, to the middle, the nose have been damaged. To the right hand side, the nose have been damaged in this picture that you're looking here. The next thing as well, uh, damaged nose, damaged mouth in the picture on the left and to the right, just damage after damaged. <clears throat> Look at these three images here. They've actually hacked out their noses so that nobody knows their African features. And it just goes on and on. Here again, we have a pharaoh whose nose has been hacked out. And the reason why they do this is because maybe most probably they didn't want anyone to know the African features. And then later on, they can go on and remodel the actual features to make it look like, um, to make it look like European people. So this has gone on. This has been the behaviors of um, Egyptology, just basically destroying um, Asian artifacts, um, statues. So now that we've identified that um, Pharaoh or Tito Moshe head is actually that of the Sphinx who is the um, eighth Pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. Mm. So now if you see any image of the Sphinx before the 18th dynasty is actually been taken from the 18th dynasty before the 18th dynasty and the eighth king is most probably fake or is been taken from the 18th dynasty and then transferred to an early dynasty, like what they did when they wanted to transfer the ownership of the Sphinx to Pharaoh, um, to Pharaoh Khufu's son, who didn't actually um, build the Sphinx. So this is what they've been doing. So any Sphinx that you see before the um, 8th, 18th century eighth king is being transferred from that dynasty onto an early dynasty because as we identified in this channel that sphinx has been sitting there as a blank pamphlet for 1573 years so nobody changed it so the only pharaoh that changed it in history is pharaoh or tito moshe who is the eighth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt. Also, just before we forget, um, Nefertiti, who we've now identified as Ifa Titi, is actually an Ifa priestess. Now, an Ifa priestess is very similar to what an oracle would be. So her citizens used to consult her for good luck and fortune. So this is what she was actually a Ra, uh, an Ifa uh, priestess. And you find that her hair is cleanly shaved. So she's got no hair, it's, it's cleanly shaved, just like the rest of the priests of Ra. They're also cleanly shaved, they don't have no moustache, they don't have no beards, as we were able to identify in our previous episode, Asian Egyptian pharaoh under attack. You know, we made that clear with the uh, bust of Ra Hotep with a moustache and a hair that that bust is fake because the priest and the priestesses of Ra do not wear hair. They have no hair on their head. So they're cleanly shaved. They don't have no moustache. They don't have no beard. They cleanly shaved, just like how um, Ifatiti or Nefertiti, as she's well known, 
also presents herself. Also, what they don't tell you in the media is that for the last 100 and 150 years, um, Egyptologists, archaeologists have been having really, really bad um, events happen to them. It's almost as if there's a, been a curse um, which is actually being placed on them. Um, a lot of them right here have actually died in mysterious circumstances because they're going into tombs and graves that should have been left alone, that should have been left in peace, um, disturbing the Pharaoh's peace. So most of them and most of their families right here have been dying in mysterious circumstances and that, that's not going to change anytime soon. For example, in this Express newspaper here, you can see it states that Egypt curse, how 22 archaeologists mysteriously died from opening the Tutankhamun tomb. So it's real. So the, the curse is actually real and it, it's, it's just going to get worse. And also, you can also see here um, in the Penn Museum, which also displays the curse of the curse of the pharaohs. So most of these Egyptologists that have been going to Egypt, lying to people, lying to the whole world about uh, who the race of these people are, what the language is, etc. There's a curse on them and that curse is not going to be lifted because you cannot treat um, 3,000 years of civilization like that and disrespect um, 3,000 years of civilization and think that, oh, you're just going to get away with it scot-free just because of the amount of money that you've been able to make uh, by fooling people um, over, over the years. So this brings us to the end of this episode. We hope that you liked I really enjoyed it. It was extremely deep and it covered um, a lot of discovery. So we're going to end it like this. Can you reform the devil and the unequivalent and undeniable answer is no. So we'll leave you with the record of achievements for Pharaoh Olong Shekwataki Okugade who is the fifth pharaoh of the first dynasty of Egypt. Goodbye.